see the sun this morning Shining through the early spring Down in peaceful Verde Valley Who knows what tomorrow may bring Will it bring the love we need To last forever Could it bring the unknown that we've never seen before? Oh, let the sky be blue tomorrow, just like it is today. Tomorrow bring the love we need to last forever more. Or could it bring the unknown that we've never seen before? Morning, huh? Yes, honey, everything is looking good. Bertha's bound to win. I can feel it in my bones. Mm was adequate. Adequate? What are you talking about? It was damn good and you know it. <laughs> that was adequate and you know it. What do you say, Steer? Uh, Steer says, mmm, did a good job. You wouldn't dare. Oh, 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 oh. Come here, little girl. Oh, you come wouldn't here. dare. Come here. No. Come here. No, Rack. No. No. Stop it. No. Stop it. Damn you, John. I 
be a lot of things to a lot of people. But I'm not my brother. Dr. Hansen, you have an emergency phone call from Walter Colby. John isn't around anymore. Maybe it's time to get used to it. Drop down. Paul? Paul, Doc. Service said you called. Yeah, I thought maybe it'd be best I come out here. You remember that calf I've been spouting off about? She's real sick. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Walt. What you've had sick cat for? Nothing like this. <laughs> Look like she's walked into a hornet's nest. Never seen nothing like it. What do you think, Doc? Got a lot of money invested in that calf. Entered it into the county fair. She's a sense to win. It ain't a black leg, is it? I'll let you know in a few hours. Dead long. Ain't that a crock? Two years of breeding shot to hell. I did what I could. She was too far gone. Yeah, there's just so much I can do. You got the bull, you can do her again. Was it the black leg? I'm not sure. I don't think so. I'm gonna run some blood samples into Flagstaff. Why don't you check your stock out? When I get back, maybe by then I'll have some answers for you. You ain't gonna quarantine me, are you? Hope not. It's going to be all right, honey. Rack don't want to quarantine you. Damn it. 
It ain't fair. A thousand bucks of prize money shot to hell. Man been busting his butt the way I've been doing it. I'll tell you what it is, woman. I'll tell you what it is. You think I don't know? That tire is uh, definitely flat, all right. The way I see it, you're going to need yourself a new tire. <laughs> Tell you what I can do. I can let you have a recap for $22 mounted. I got $5. All I got. Ain't worth no more. <laughs> hey, old Clyde. I can't sell you no damn tire for five dollars. Eighteen dollars. That, that's, that's the best I can do, Clyde. Maybe I got an old tire out in the shed you can use until you can get yourself something better. I know, I know. You got five dollars. That's that's all you got. Just pull it on up here out of the way, and I'll see what I can do. Well, you can really fly that machine, can't you? Oh, say, listen, can I help you with something, Mayor Wright? No, you just go on doing what you're doing. I'm fine. Oh, I appreciate that. Sell another tire. Oh, 
Oh, and, and when you check under the hood, please don't get any grease on the paint. Oh, no, ma'am. Wouldn't want to do that. Boy, I'll bet this car goes real fast, huh? Mm-hmm. Is there a nice, quiet hotel in town? Yes, ma'am. You just go down the road a couple of miles, and you'll see a sign saying Washburn's Lodge. ML picks you up. Thank you. A little ha-ha friend said you wanted all the hell of When I returned the next day... Where's your lady's room? Ah, you go around the building there and turn left at the end. It's on your left-hand side. It's out of order. You're gonna have to use a men's room. That's right beside the ladies' room. I can show you the way. Stay guard for you. Uh, no, thank you. I'll manage just fine. Hey, Doc, uh, I understand Colby's having a few problems out there. Nothing serious. The owner of this car wants it filled up. And don't get no grease on the paint. Yo, know, where's he at? She is in the men's room. I was told in town that I could rent a cabin here for a couple of days. That's right. My name's Emma Washburn. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon my manners. That's all right. I'm Diane Ashley. Is that right? Uh -huh. Well, the room's here are nine bucks a night, and the cabins are eleven. Of course, in a couple of weeks, the prices are going up. Oh, why's that? County fair, you know. Oh, well, of course. <laughs> it's not like we're trying to chip you. It's just that... Camp Verde's so far off the beaten path that we gotta make a buck any way we can. Mm-hmm. Now, the meals are served at designated hours. No later, no sooner. Uh, yes, ma'am. But the bar is open till midnight. <laughs> I think I'd like... I think I'd like the cabin. You got it. Hey, Fred. You wanna clean up over there? I'm gonna give the lady a hand. you happen to know where I might find a Dr. Robert Hansen? He's with a veterinarian. You mean rat? Oh, it's about a ten-minute drive south of here. Ah. You friend of rat? No. Well, if you ain't, you soon will be. Here we are. It ain't exactly home, but it'll do you for a couple of days. All right. Walter, will you settle down? I called the university three times today. They told me they're sending somebody out to examine the carcass. They didn't tell me why. Damn it, man, nobody's mentioned the word quarantine except you. I'll get back to you. He's gonna have to shut down Colby, Rack. He's gonna be mad as hell. Yes. Looks like the mayor's car. It could mean nothing but trouble. What's this I hear about you planning to quarantine the Colby place? With the county fair only three weeks away, this is mighty serious business, man. Now listen, you know in a small town like this, word gets around very fast. Yeah, I don't have to tell you, you know how the people are. They get upset at the least little bitty thing. There's a hell of a lot of money at stake here. Sounds like you need a beer, man. Oh, thanks. Hi, G. Yeah. Now listen, here's what I got in mind. If you find any problems out there at the Colby place, kind of keep it to yourself where you can have a low profile. You know what I mean? Uh-oh. And the ears right? No. Good 
Good afternoon. I'm Diane Ashley. I was told I could find a Dr. Robert Hansen here. Afternoon. I'm Gene Smith. This is Mayor Connors. Pleasure. How do you do? As for the doctor, he's standing right over there. Oh, thank you very much. Excuse me. Hello? You. Who? Me? <laughs> I'm from the Department of Entomology at Arizona State University in Tempe. Oh. Huh. That's it. Want a beer? No, thank you. You submitted some blood samples, urine tests, and a smear. That's right. I suggest you look these over. You have a very serious problem on your hands. Why don't you tell me how serious a problem? Does that mean we'll have a quarantine? No, at least not from our preliminary findings. That's great. That's the best news I've heard all day. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to get back to town. I've got a little county fair business I've got to take care of. Goodbye. Bye, Rack. So long, Gene. Uh, pardon me for intruding, ma'am, but uh, what exactly did that calf die of? Venom. A massive dose of venom. Red corpuscles were almost non-existent. Venom? Are you trying to tell me that calf was brought down by a snake bite? No. I'm telling you that calf was brought down by spider venom. <coughs> hey, you're serious. You want me to believe that a 200-pound calf was killed by a, 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 a spider? Frankly, Dr. Hansen, I don't particularly care what you believe. However, I would like to count on your full cooperation. I'd like to examine the carcass and visit the Colby Ranch as soon as possible. As far as the carcass is concerned, it's in the freezer. And we'll visit the Colby Ranch in the morning. That'll be fine. Oh, by the way, I'm staying at... But then you know where I'm staying, since you were kind enough to direct me there. How would you like to have some dinner tonight? Well, I probably will. I'll see you in the morning. Slick as a nat's ass, is <laughs> So, how'd you make out in town today? Did you meet up with Rand? Yes. Oh, and I met the mayor and the sheriff. They both seem like very nice men. Oh, as for the mayor, yeah. But that Gene Smith, he and I used to be, well, um, pretty close. And now? Now? Well, we're different kind of friends. <laughs> a long time ago, that Gene Smith used to be one hell of a man with ladies. But now all he needs to get him through the night is a case of beer. <laughs> I guess I kind of wore him out. <laughs> it's sad, though, when a man's main interest in life moves up to his stomach. <laughs> you nice people didn't meet yet. Diane Ashley, this is Vern and Betty Johnson. They just drove up in that fancy motorhome you saw parked outside, all the way from Nebraska. Here for the county fair. Uh, Colorado. Uh, we're from Colorado. Nice to meet you, Miss Ashley. Hi. Uh, Colorado, Nebraska. If it ain't Arizona, it's all the same. Uh, you saw my motorhome out there, huh? Forty thousand dollars worth. I understand you're you're a scientist. You know, you and Vernon have a lot in common. Oh, uh, really? Oh, that's how I make all my money. Kind of uh, scientific, you know, through chemicals. Oh, you're a chemist. No, you don't understand. Vern invented a new kind of chemical toilet. You know, the kind they use at construction sites. Uh, sold the business, though. Sold out to my partner. Just couldn't take the pressure anymore. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, say, uh, can I buy you a drink? A pretty girl like you shouldn't be drinking alone. No, thank you, mister. And Mrs. Johnson, <laughs> um, good night.
Well, hello there. My goodness, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to live in people's houses. You're supposed to live in the ground. <laughs> You're pretty, though. Come on, little guy. I'll take you outside. There we go. Go on, now. Go burrow yourself a home someplace. Off you go. Go on. <laughs> Still no sign of old Jake, huh? Fool dog. I always said he was too stupid to find his way home. Hey, here comes company. Hey, Wolf. Hey. Are you from the university yet? I'd like you to meet Ms. Ashley. Ms. Ashley's from the venomous animal section on Tempe. I'm sorry to hear about your calf, Mr. Colby. From what I could tell, he was a fine-looking animal. Colby! 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 Old Jake's dead! What are you talking about, honey? Out behind the barn! It would appear this one died the same way the calf did. Well, I guess the next step is to destroy my stock. Well, you might as well put a gun to my head while you're at it. Now, Mr. Colby, your stock is not dying from any plague or bacteria infection. Both of those animals died from massive injections of spider venom. Well, there you go again. Look, there's no way a spider can kill a dog, let alone a fair-sized cat. Maybe one can, but what about a few hundred? Well, that explains the spider hill. Spider hill? You yeah, the damnest thing I ever saw, Rack. This morning when I was hunting for the dog, I watched it for almost an hour. Hundreds of them near as I could tell. Let's go take a look. Okay. I'm seeing this, but I sure don't believe it. God, I've never seen anything like this before. How about you, Hanson? Treats the hell out of me, Ashley. Sure does give you the creeps, though, doesn't it? How many you figure are in here? God, the size of this hill could be thousands, I guess. You want to know how many is in this hill? I'll show you how many is in that damn hill. Oh, take no, 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 no. Mrs. Colby, do you suppose you could get me an empty can with a lid? I don't think DDT's going to kill him. No. Most spiders, especially the big ones, become immune to it. Do you think you'd get Mr. Colby to let this hill alone until I can do some more checking? I think so, for a while, but not long. Almost everything he's got is tied up in that lifestyle. This is amazing. This guy here is about 600 miles from where he should be. Here you go. Thank you. Hope these things don't get into the house. They sure give me the willies. If it's all right, I'd like to examine the area where the first animal died. Okay, this way, ma'am. Walt, if you'll drive Miss Ashley, Ms. Ashley, over to Emma's when you're done, I'd appreciate it. I'm a half hour late from seeing my girl. 
Well, I know you're going to have dinner tonight. Why don't we do it together this time? Well, it seems as though we both have very busy schedules. Hi, honey. How are you? Great. Good. But my cat ran away. Your cat ran away? Well, don't you worry about your cat. He's a tomcat. He likes to prowl around. Mm -hmm. Not unlike some other people I know. <laughs> Who's that lady? Are we still going on the ride tomorrow? We sure are. You think I'd miss a chance to be with the prettiest little girl in Arizona? Not on a bet. <laughs> Want to hear my Uncle Ramus record? I sure do. You go set it up, and I'll be with you in a second. Hey, I'm sorry about what happened the other day. I don't know what you're talking about, lady. <laughs> Rick, you're a funny man. You won't be with your brother's wife, but you take care of her like you were. Isn't that like buying the cow and giving the milk away? You don't quit pestering me. Yeah. One of these mornings, I'm going to show up and start milking that cow. <laughs> well, just make sure your hands are warm. <laughs> You definitely have a convenient way of showing up, don't you? Yeah, kind of handy that way. Mm-hmm. What, no girlfriend? Oh, what's the phrase they use out here in the wide open spaces? A little wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. She was into Uncle Remus, I wasn't. Pardon me? You're kind of pretty for a girl. Well, thank you, Dr. Hanson. Where are you going? Oh, dinner. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> what are you doing? Dr. Hanson, would you please put me down? All right. Yeah. Ow! Wait a minute. Nobody drives my car. Excuse me, but you don't seem to understand. Look out for safety, honey. Drinks from the bar? Oh, Excuse me. Oh, anything you order is just fine with me, honey pie. <laughs> Two beers. Would a glass offend you, or should we drink them right from the can? How'd it go over at Colby's day? I gotta tell you, I'm still a little skeptical about the spider theory of yours. Would you be less skeptical if a man had told you? Hey, the only person who's uptight about you being a woman is you, you know. I called Tempe today. I checked you out. They say in your field, there's none better. <laughs> what is this, cowboy psychology? Here we go. Thank you. To women's lip. To Gary Cooper. <laughs> By the way, how the hell did you ever get a name like Rack? Oh, I had a kid brother two years younger than me. Pool playing is some of a bitch you ever saw. And he never liked to work as a kid, and I did. And I used to kid him about it. And I'd say, you're not going to have enough money to spend on the girls on the weekends. Every Friday night, I'll be damned if he didn't get me into a game of pool and beat them. Beat me for everything I'd earned that week. And he'd laugh, and he'd laugh. And he'd say, rack them. <laughs> and the name kind of stuck, and he started calling me Rack. He lives around here, does he? No. He got killed in Nam. Second day was there. That uh, girl I told you I had to go see, that's his little daughter. I kind of 
look after her and her mother. I see. You know, the, those reports of yours, both those animals dying of spider venom. Why, why would spiders suddenly turn aggressive towards livestock? I mean, venomous spiders are loners, they're cannibals. If they don't have anything to eat, they'll kill and eat each other. Food. You want to order? No, no, not right now. What I'm saying is that food could be the principal reason for the attacks on the cattle. What I mean is that through the excessive use of insecticides like DDT, we are inadvertently killing off the spider's natural source of food. So, in order to survive, spiders, as well as other insects, are having to readjust their eating habits and therefore becoming much more aggressive. How do we get rid of them? incredible thing I have ever seen. I mean, this right here is scientific phenomenon. What do you mean? As you know, all species of megalomorphs are cannibalistic. If you put them together, they'll kill each other off. They just don't colonize like ants or bees do. Yet, yeah. look at this picture and this picture here. These tarantulas are not fighting. Maybe they found love. Very funny. On a hunch this morning, I called the local paper for ads for missing pets. Do you know that in the last three months, there have been over 30 ads for missing animals, anything from cats to goats? First thing in the morning, I'm going to send this off to my lab for analysis. How about the spider hill? Well, that was the only one out there. Maybe we should just burn it. Yeah, let's just burn it. I'm going to burn that spider heel rack, whether you like it or not. Feel it, Walt. We're here for the same reason. Let's burn her down. What's wrong? Nothing. so quiet. Oh, yes. Sometimes it gets so quiet out here, you could hear a pin drop. Die. 
And there's nothing I can do. Seven years to save for that bull. Are you all right? Yes, I'll be all right, honey. Let's just go burn down that damn spider hill. Birch, if I was you, I'd get him into town and have a doctor look at his arm. Maybe you should both just stay in town until we can isolate this. What's happening here? Are you crazy, lady? This is our home. And no damn spiders are gonna run us out. That bull's gonna break for sure. I'm getting scared, Rack. If those spiders will go after a 1,500-pound bull, what's to stop them from turning on us next? No, I'm Diane Ashley. How do you do, ma'am? Uh, hello, I'm I'm Terry Hanson. Good to know you. Hi. Come on out back, Diane. Well, I'll show you my sweater. Oh my Are you going to be in Camp Verde long? Well, it's hard to tell. I could be here a while, though. <laughs> you know, I feel like I'm playing hooky. It's so beautiful out here. What if the lab reports come back early oh, and I have to go back or something? It. And plus the fact, I don't want to intrude, you Don't know? be silly. Every Wednesday, I take Linda out for a ride while Terry helps out at the general store. Sure, welcome aboard. Okay, thanks. I'll get the food. Well, Jerry? come on, then. Is it all right? Uh, it's great. Super. She seems like a real nice lady. Me to drive you into Cottonwood, honey. I'll be okay, Birch. I just need a little time to think. You're one hell of a woman, lady. Now you get yourself back on in the house. I'm gonna be just fine. Stay away from that field today, okay? Right over there. Can you do that? 
Of course, I know how. Here, I want to show you something. It's so beautiful here, so peaceful. There's Colby's truck. Great thing about this part of the country, everybody knows everybody. I can get you. No, no, so fine for the moment. Oh, all right. Where's my apple? Ah. You like being taken care of, don't you? Anybody taking care of you? Not at the moment. Good, Gene. Mr. Benson there was driving about a quarter mile in back of him when it happened. All of a sudden, he started driving erratic, and the next thing that happened, he was over the side of the cliff. We're about ready to bring him up now. Well, hold it. Let me take a look first. All right. Got a problem? Truck went off the road there. I 
I have to figure out a way to get down there without breaking my neck. Maybe I can give you a hand. Stay in the truck a while, will you? Sure. Damn. That looks like Colby's truck. It is Colby. I just saw him. What brings you out here? Afraid I got some bad news for you, Bert. You're gonna quarantine us. It'll kill Colby if you do that. You can't do that to us. This ranch is all we got, Gene. to locate that Miss Ashley. But uh, I don't suppose you've seen her. Yes, Mildred, she is. Hold on. Yes. Yes, this is Diane Ashley. You're sure? Well, who ran the tests? OK, I'll keep you advised. Certainly. Goodbye. The venom we sent to the lab is five times more toxic than normal. Right here. Yes, Jane. Where? We'll be right out. That was the sheriff. He's over at Colby's. He's found another 20 or 30 hills just like the one we burned. What do you think, man? Well, Rack, there's only one thing to do. Let's just spray the whole damn area. Gene, you get a hold of the Baron. Tell him to get out here first thing in the morning, will you? No, you can't do that. I'm sorry, sir, but you don't seem to understand. You see, pesticides only make it worse, and you could be letting yourself in for one hell of a lot of trouble. Listen, honey, you don't understand. We're going to have a county fair here in two weeks, and I don't want a bunch of damn spiders roaming all over this whole countryside. Look, it's not just a bunch of spiders. It's a migration caused by some kind of imbalance. Uh, probably because a lot of ignorant people like yourself have killed off all their food with your stupid DDT. Now, I'll tell you something else, sir. There's not just a few spiders out there. There's millions of them, and your town is right in their path. All right, honey. If you can't kill them with spray, why don't you tell us what will kill them? The natural predators like birds, rats. Rats. Gene, I want you to get the strongest pesticide available. I want to spray everything oh. in sight. The spider hills, the fields, everything around here. Do you understand me? Mayor, you can't use parathion without permission from the state. Ah, oh, listen, Gene, copy shot. It's a crazy idea. I mean, the stuff is lethal. The amount you have to use could endanger the whole town one whiff. I mean. Listen, Rack, will you let me handle this? Gene, can you get some volunteers and, and help move people into town? Yeah, I suppose so. Mayor, are you willing to take responsibility for this action? Well, now, the sheriff's in charge here. But I assure you I'll do everything I can to help him. Come on, let's get out of here. Well, 
Well, I'll tell you one thing. By the time I get through, there won't be a spider left between here and the wide Missouri. You stay well clear of town. That parathion's deadly. Yeah, I know. See you later. Okay, Rack.
help, but, sir, I need to know exactly when. Good. Thank you. I've called everyone I can. Now they're going to send an investigative team in a couple of days. What the hell do we do now? How many of those damn spiders are out there anyway? <laughs> I wish I knew. Uh, there are many theories regarding man's outcome if the insect world were to turn on him. All I can tell you is that in none of them do we come out on top. Thanks a lot. I was really worried about that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Baron Spray didn't even touch those spider hills. I think someone should take a run out to Kofi's place. Jay, get Birch called me on the phone. Sure. Mildred, would you get Birch Kofi, please? <laughs> Out there, Gene. I better take a run out there. Gene, I think I better go get Terry and Linda and bring them to town.
How's Linda? She's not very well. I think she's in shock. Did you get a hold of anybody? No, the phone's graveyard dead. Now, what the hell is going on here? You two are giving me the jitters. Emma. How many people do you have in this place? Just the Johnsons, Diane here, myself, old Fred out back. Emma, I want you to do something without asking any questions. I want you to go get Fred, get him in here. And then you and him lock the place up. I'll go get the Johnsons. What the hell do you mean, lock it up? Now, I'm not moving a damn inch until you finish telling me what's going on. Starting with, where's Terry? Terry's dead. Emma, now, we don't have a lot of time to explain. But the spiders in this area, so far only the tarantulas, have organized themselves into an aggressive army. And they've already killed off Colby and Linda's mother. God only knows how many others. Rack's right. We should get out of here as quickly as possible. Is that what happened to the Baron this morning? Could be. You better get out of here. Emma, do you have any fire extinguishers here? Yeah, I think there's a, a couple in the kitchen. Good. Go get Fred, have him bring them here. I've never seen anything like it. One minute they weren't there, and the next minute they were everywhere. Where? Out front. I was cleaning out the Vogue, and I turned around, and there they were in groups, watching me. Boy, I don't mind telling you, it gave me the creeps. What does it all mean? What are they doing there? They're all these spiders, are they? They can't hurt us, can they? <laughs> I want to get out of here. I don't like this place. Now, honey, don't worry. It's probably one of those traditions. Like those birds coming back to Capistrano. How's it feel to be on the other end of a microscope? Not funny. Not meant to be. Get in the lodge. Keep the Johnsons in there. Get in the lodge. I can't move. I can't move. Get in the lodge. seen Birch call me. I've never seen anything like she was wrapped up in a cocoon like a like a package. Same thing happened to old Fred. This whole country is swarming with those damn things. I better get to state on the phone and get some help up here. If you can get through. Fred. Oh, Colby. What about these cocoons? That's how they store their food. Come on, Mildred. Come on. <laughs> I demand to know what's going on around here. We'll let you know as soon as we have a clue. Now, why don't you go sit down and have a drink or something? Okay? You know, I don't blame the poor guy. I'd like to know what the hell is going on, too. You been to town yet? Well, I'm heading there now. I'm trying to get a call through. I can't get a hold of my deputy. I... Hey, Big Ugly. You take care of yourself now. Yeah? Yeah. I better get going. Uh, 
back. Keep an eye out on them, okay? We'll be loading up that house on wheels and we'll be on your tail. Chemical fire extinguishers kill them off, so make sure you round up plenty. You got it. It's all right, sweetheart. I'm telling you, I don't think we should chance it.
air conditioner's on. Emma, turn the air conditioning up. It is up. trapped in here. He might have gone on to Cottonwood. Or even Flagstaff. To get some help. Especially if this thing isn't localized. Yeah. Patience, honey. Now, you got to have a little patience. I've spent a lot of years waiting for that man. Oh, he's still dead. Hey, come on, you two. Come on. Why don't you get some rest, both of you? And I'll check things out. Huh? It's the best idea I've heard yet. Come on, honey. What was that? Sound like it came from one of the bedrooms. Oh, my God. Bert, do we have any more lumber? There's more, but I don't know how much. Go get it. Get me a hammer and get me a hammer and nail. Hell, use the furniture. Do. Emma, where's the fuse box? In the basement, under the window. Get everyone into the kitchen. Dan, go get Linda. Just me, little one. Here we go. Come on. There's a flashlight in the toolbox. I'll get it. No, no, no. I'll get it. You go into the kitchen. Right. Everyone else.
sleep more than anything. <laughs> Jean didn't used to be able to stand beside of me first thing in the morning. Did you know that, Rack? He used to say to me, Emma, for Christ's sake, go get some coffee inside of you before I take a look at you. We can't be sure. Yes, we can, Rack. <laughs> Coffee's going to be ready in a minute. <laughs> oh, this damn thing. Nothing, huh? Mm. Trying to get the six o'clock news. We should be on the wire services. 
Keep trying. I'm gonna take a look outside. It's daylight. Brad. Even for a split second, you could let hundreds of them in. I'll be careful. Brad? Why don't you try one of the windows? If they'd have broken the glass, we'd have heard them. All right, if it makes it feel any easier. Oh, boy. Well, good morning, you happy folks out there in the land of paradise. Oh, this is a glorious morning. The sun is shining. There's not a cloud in the sky. The temperature right here at your favorite neighborhood station is a beautiful 61 degrees, and it's warming up real good during the day. I hope you're all going to stay tuned for some good old homespun country music with your friendly host here, Uncle Bill. Who the hell cares about Uncle Bill? What about us? We got a pile of albums here. Must be a mile high. And all your real perennial favorites. Nothing like good old country music to wake us up on a fine, bright morning like this one. The news and everything that's happening on the local scene will follow. But right now, let's get into a good song with Dorsey Burnett and his country kicker pickers with a salute to peaceful Birdie Valley, a great place to live in. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Tomorrow bring the love we need to last forever more. Or could it bring the unknown that we've never seen before? Oh, let the sky. Just like it is today Down in peaceful Verde Valley May it never fade away Will tomorrow bring the love we need To last forever Could it bring the unknown that we've never seen before? 